The Comanches, a name derived from the Yut word meaning enemy, or anyone who wants to fight me all the time. They called themselves Numenu, meaning the people. Some would say the most savage and courageous horseback warriors in history. Engaging in warfare against other native tribes including the famous Apaches, Osage, and Pawnee, they also fought against European American settlers, Mexicans, and the United States government. The image of Plains Native Americans on horseback has become iconic in modern times. Quanah Parker, who led the Comanches from the late 1800s to his passing in 1911. The fierce leader led Comanche assaults against American communities and troops, opposing American expansion into Comanche territory for centuries. Horseback, or Tehuyakwahipu, a Comanche chief who lived during the mid-19th century, when the Comanche people were frequently at odds with European settlers and the United States government. He fought back ferociously and committed to safeguarding his people's way of life from intrusion. Horseback is recognized as a skillful and dedicated fighter among the Comanche chiefs who took part in numerous battles. Lone Wolf, or Gepego, was the last principal chief of the Kiowa Comanche tribe two separate tribes who formed a lasting alliance in war and hunting grounds from the year 1790. Gepego was a member of the Koitsenko, the Kiowa Comanche warrior elite, and another fine horseback bowman. But the three of these outstanding men, their horseback abilities were not totally unique, all Comanche warriors, even females, were some of the most skilled and fiercest horseback fighters in history. It is important to note that Native Americans had no prior exposure to horses until the late 1400s, when the Spanish introduced them to the New World as a weapon of conquest. The Comanche quickly recognized the horse's potential and skillfully incorporated it into their strategies to defend their land and preserve their way of life. The Comanches mastered the horse more so than any other North American tribe, therefore altering the balance of power on the plains. The Comanche's territory ranged from present-day north-central Texas, eastern New Mexico, southeastern Colorado, southwestern Kansas, western Oklahoma, and northern Chihuahua, Mexico. The Comanche had previously been part of the Wyoming Shoshone, a native group that occupied the territory from what is now southeastern California across central and eastern Nevada and northwestern Utah into southern Idaho and western Wyoming. The Comanches moved south in successive stages, attacking and displacing other tribes, most notably the famous Apache, whom they drove from the southern plains. Yes, it wasn't just American settlers they fought against, the Comanches engaged in wars against fellow native tribes and anyone they could for land, for resources, for cultural reasons, for slaves. It is estimated up to 20,000 people were kidnapped by the Comanches, for both white settlers and other native tribes, if you were unlucky enough to be caught as an adult male by the Comanches you were tortured, and killed, quickly, or slowly depending on what time they had. Scalp removal was a common practice if caught by the Comanches. Babies were also extinguished as they had not the time nor personnel to look after them. Teenagers or young women were more lucky, they would likely be made to be a slave. The most likely to be caught, and then adopted into the Comanche family were both boys and girls between the ages of about 8 to 13, as the Comanches had trouble keeping their numbers up. So they would take these captives and raise them as one of their own, and this was not just for the white American, this was a rule for all native tribes, against other native tribes. In fact the mother of Quana Parker, mentioned at the start of the video, was Cynthia N. Parker, a white American settler born in Texas who was kidnapped by the Comanches at around the age of nine during a raid in 1836, and became fully assimilated into the Comanche family. In December 1860 after years of Texas Rangers searching for Cynthia, they caught a fleeing woman who, in broken English identified herself and her family's name, and she was taken back to the white American community where she was born. However, Parker never adjusted to her new surroundings. She missed her sons and the Comanche way of life, so she began refusing food and water and passed away in March 1871. By the early 1800s the Comanche were very powerful, with a population estimated from 7,000 to as many as 30,000 individuals. 
Like most other Indian tribes, they were a nomadic group who were organized into autonomous bands, local groups formed on the basis of kinship and other social relationships. Buffalo products formed the core of the Comanche economy and included robes, teepee covers, sinew thread, water carriers made of the animal's stomach, and a wide variety of other goods. They also hunted buffalo as a main source of food, utilizing their lifelong training on horseback to full effect. In the 18th and 19th century, as American settlers expanded westward, they encroached upon traditional Comanche territories. Additionally, cultural differences and misunderstandings played a role in the conflicts, as well. The Comanches had a different way of life, relying on a nomadic lifestyle and buffalo hunting, while the settlers had a more sedentary agricultural lifestyle. These differences in cultural practices and land use often led to clashes and misunderstandings, thus leading to conflicts and full-blown wars over control of the Comanches' valuable hunting and grazing lands. This is where their experience and expertise on horseback came into play. Being a Comanche meant being raised in an environment where superior riding skills were paramount to success and survival. It was these mastered riding techniques that gave them special advantages on the battlefield, and it was imperative that the Comanche warrior had a horse he completely trusted with his life. Riders and their mounts became so familiar with each other that, to the outside observer, it almost appeared that they operated as one entity. One depicts the Comanche battle tactic in which the rider would shift all the way to one side of the horse while dropping down low in order to shield his body from his enemy in combat. The rider would discharge his weapon under the horse's neck toward the enemy while in full gallop. A man named Tuck Walker stated this in an interview in 1924, the Comanche hunters could shoot a buffalo while the horse was running very fast, or use him for a shield by dropping at the side and lying in a horizontal position, and so protected from his enemies by the horse's body. The heel of the rider would be hanging over the horse's back. From this position the rider could regain his usual riding position or change to the other side, and use his bow and arrow from under the horse's neck. This method of riding is very difficult, but very young braves had to learn how to ride in this manner for his own protection and to win battles. An Englishman named William Blakemore, who spent eight years among the Comanches, also wrote this telling description. On foot slow and awkward, but on horseback graceful, they are the most expert and daring riders in the world. In battle they sweep down upon their enemies with terrific yells, and concealing the whole body with the exception of one foot behind their horses. Discharge bullets or arrows over and under the animal's neck and accurately. Each has his favorite war horse which he regards with great affection and only mounts when he goes into battle. Even the women are daring riders and hunters lassoing antelope and shooting buffalo. The Comanches were a highly skilled and resilient Native American tribe that once thrived on the Great Plains. Their history is marked by both triumphs and challenges, as they faced conflicts with European settlers, the impact of diseases, and the loss of their ancestral lands. Over time, their population and influence declined due to these factors, but the marvelous Comanche people still live on. Today, the Comanche Nation is a federally recognized tribe that has 17,000 members, around 7,000 of whom reside in tribal jurisdictional areas around Lawton, Fort Sill, and the surrounding areas of southwestern Oklahoma. The Comanche have their homecoming annual celebration in mid-July in Walters, Oklahoma. These celebrations include powwow, which is Comanche-style dancing and singing, music, bull riding, native arts and crafts, and a carnival. It is a wonderful opportunity for the indigenous Comanche people to socialize, dance, sing, and honor their extraordinary culture.